All right, here's another one. While we're up here, might as well read off, read off a few of these emails. It's not a bad backdrop, right? Maybe I'll switch it up the way home and blast off some somewhere else, maybe. But anyway, here we go. Listen to this one, you guys. My experience is extremely mild compared to what you usually get, but I find people's reactions are interesting. I'm in the process of relocating to Colorado from Texas, and I rented a house on the Arkansas River this winter to search for land and get acquainted with the area. The first week of December, I went hiking in the Pen Penitent Canyon, Penitent, P-E-N-E-T-I-N-T-E -E -E Canyon, and I came across some tracks in the snow that fit the typical description of Sasquatch tracks. It was 16 inches long, resembling a bare human foot, with a stride being about seven feet between steps. I took a picture with my, with my tracks along the side for reference. These tracks were a few days old and had, be, and had been exposed to sunlight, so they were deteriorating, but the, shape was not, but the shape was not that of a boot, and a few had indications of toes. The tracks came down from some mountains, went alongside the hiking trail for a couple of miles, then went back up on the mountains. I had not had much of interest in the subject before, but witnessing this firsthand woke me up. Yeah, no doubt, it usually does, man. When you see tracks firsthand, <laughs> it's, a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a fact to take in. That night I began looking into the subject and discovered your YouTube channel, and since I've experienced what you talk about from people, I've told about this. I find people are mainly in two camps, either overwhelmingly enthusiastic about the existence of these things, or they're in a stubborn, flat denial that anything like this could exist. I've had people tell me I should get the picture printed and frame it and show it to media outlets, and I've had people laugh and say that I've taken a picture of the tracks of a long-distance runner training. But I've had people come up with very imaginable ways these tracks could have been made, other than by Bigfoot. I don't know what made these, I only know what I saw and the weird feeling I got. Thank you for your work you put into your videos. They've been very educational and enlightening. And if you have read this far, thank you for reading this. I can imagine you're overwhelmed with emails. Michael Young, Bryan, Texas. Thanks, Michael. And uh, it's kind of funny. It is amazing to me. You wouldn't believe what the, the people that come up with. I mean, you can share a photograph that you took standing over top of that ground and people from somewhere else on the planet that wasn't even there that see it online or wherever you share it will try to dictate to you what it was or wasn't. <laughs> and that is kind of funny. And um, touching on the, when you talk about the two camps about people who absolutely flat out deny, um, when I showed those facial photographs of those beings to some grown men that hunt, that I know, and I showed those photographs to them. Before that, they were flat out deniers, or they flat out, even though I looked them in the eye and told them I've seen these things twice, without a doubt, they would still, they just couldn't, they it appeared to me they couldn't take it in, they just couldn't handle it, and said, well, I got it, I'd have to see one for myself. But then when I showed those guys, the same guys, the photos of those faces, um, then it was then that I knew that the topic scared the shit out of them and there's no other excuse for it. So, so for you and anybody else out there that takes photographs of footprints or sees the footprints yourselves or even videotapes them or sees one of these things and when you experience a group of people at your workplace or your friends or your circle in your neighborhood and they just flat out laugh right off the bat, it's another thing too, when people just flat out laugh, they're scared, it scares them. I mean, let's face it, um, saying you saw a Sasquatch isn't a funny comedy line. It's not a comedy skit. There's nothing really in there to make you laugh your head off. If, it, if, if there is, you would be a riot to go to a comedy show with. <laughs> because, you know, somebody says to me, I saw a Sasquatch, I don't instantly knee-jerk in a tenth of a second react with loud laughter. That's not a normal reaction. That's a reaction to being scared. All right? Just is. And I thought I'd add that into all you people that get really, really frustrated with people that react that way as long as you know that they react that way out of fright then you will be able to have more patience and you will not feel so belittled or insulted from their reactions all right it's just the way it works now it's a bit of a short one so maybe i'll just tack another one in here because i've only got about 500 in my phone right i don't even know what this one's about let's read it hopefully it's punctuated well so i can read smoothly Hey Steve, I'm watching videos, and bro, I love how you're real and don't give a shit about what people think. 
about the Sasquatch topic. I had experience while camping at Lake Cachis, Washington, just past Snoqualmie Pass in October 2017 that changed my life. I've been looking feverishly on YouTube and the internet for answers ever since. My girlfriend and I just finished cooking ribeye shrimp. My girlfriend and I had just finished cooking ribeye, shrimp, corn on the cob, and garlic bread over our campfire and putting everything away after dinner and just standing there admiring the quiet night overlooking the lake. Lake. It was about 10 p.m. when all of a sudden the sound came from, I'm guessing about 100 feet back from the forest line from our camp that shook me to my very being. It roared with the sound of a hyena cackle and then followed up by a howl that was in three different octaves at once low, medium, and high with a vibrato. Lasting, I'm thinking, a total 20 to 30 seconds. It was so incredibly loud, I felt all of a sudden off kilter and a bit dizzy. I never heard anything like this in my life. I'm 55 and I've camped and hunted in the Northwest all my life since I was a teenager. I don't know how to explain this sound because every time I do, it seems to cheapen the actual event and maybe that's what it means to be lost of words. Anyways, my girlfriend looked at me and said, honey, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And my instincts was like, what the hell, let's get out of here. I said, no, no, let's go. And I, with my 44 Magnum flashlight, scanned the forest edge as I urged, urged her to hurry, putting her stuff in the truck to leave. We eventually left, leaving our tent, chairs, tables, etc., and only took the most valuable items. As I said to her, we'll come back tomorrow and get the rest. Well, we got in the truck, and I was so shooken up that I was having a hard time finding the little road out where we came in off of the lake bed. Finally made it home in the North Bend, Washington, and the next day we went back up and nothing was disturbed. We were the only campers out there in the middle of that week. This changed my life. I did not believe in anything like this before. This changed my life. I did not believe in anything like this before, and still to this day searching for answers. I did not see the creature that made this sound, but only heard it, and the power was amazing. It was like he or she was showing us its power and prowess, telling us to leave, and we did. Being the only campers on this huge lake at the time, why did it pick our spot? Question I ask myself daily. Thanks for your time, and please get back to me. I would love to talk to you if that's an option. I know you're busy, Jim. Whew. Well, that sound is freaking unnerving. I've heard some sounds. I got screamed at actually just last uh, early November. Got a shriek. The only way I could describe it was like a pterodactyl screaming up out of the timber. And it was just before I set up the camera to film an email by myself. And I was fairly in the open in the log and clear cut. And I'm like, whatever, what are you going to do, right? So I just basically stayed there. It was probably about, I don't know, it was probably 250 yards from me and it let her rip. But it wasn't one of those uh, chest vibrating ones. It was just a loud, ridiculous shriek. And it sounded just like a pterodactyl shriek that you used to hear in cartoons on TV, similar to that. And, uh, you know, obviously I froze up right away. Didn't have the camera on record at the time. Thought about running. I uh, screw it, whatever, I got the rifle. And I hit record on the camera, never heard a thing. And then uh, videotaped up the email sent to me and I laughed. But I know it's pretty unnerving, man. I mean, I've talked to a conservation officer here in BC that was stuck at a boat launch at a lake near the Nanaimo River on Vancouver Island. And he's with another guy. And they had to listen to this thing absolutely screaming at them from the timber edge all night long until the morning until somebody came, light came up and somebody came and helped him get the truck unstuck. And he said he had a 30 odd six and then his sidearm with him. And he basically clinched it the whole night long. But there you go. It's not gonna stop coming. And uh, I think the only advice I can add up offer up to people right now is when these things do happen. I mean, if your gut tells you to run, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're in a big city, if you're in a weird neighborhood, if you're in the truck stop, if you're anywhere camping or hunting, and if your gut tells you you're in danger or you're being threatened, you go with your gut at all costs in life, in this lifetime. Trust me, you listen to your gut no matter what the topic is. Your gut says something, you listen. 